Hey folks, something that started with that old gunked up GTX 660 Ti seems to have spiralled into something a little bit more interesting. A second episode of Can We Fix It? Very imaginatively titled. So what we've got here is another Nvidia card, and indeed another Nvidia card based on that same GK104 GPU, the Nvidia GTX 670. Now this is a cut down version of the GTX 680, which was released back in May of 2012, and back then it retailed for around about $400. Now I've talked in other videos about the process of binning, and the GTX 670 is simply a GTX 680 which didn't quite make the grade. That doesn't mean it's a bad product though. The CUDA core count did drop down from the 680's 1536 to 1344, a reduction of 192 cores. The 128 TMUs dropped down by 16 to 112 units, and we still got all 32 ROPs and 2GB of GDDR5 memory buffer on that 256-bit bus. The card at stock, it boosted just over 1GHz, and the memory has an effective speed of just over 6GHz. So it sounds great, right? I mean, the GTX 680 is basically a GTX 770, and the 660 Ti, which is a little lower than the 670, is still a decent budget performer, so we should be looking at some great results with this. In theory, yes, especially with this pre-overclocked EVGA SC edition. In reality though, no. This card was actually donated to me from another YouTuber called Twisted Skins Tech, who will throw his link down in the description below and it displays some really strange behaviour. The problem we see is random crashes, immediately when putting the GPU under severe load. We see a temperature spike and an immediate crash, so something is definitely up here. Dialing back the clock speeds in MSI Afterburner does allow us to get into a game. But as we start to ramp the clock speeds back up, we can eventually replicate the failure time and time again. I'm using Rise of the Tomb Raider here to do the testing, as it launches in a separate window to allow us to dictate the settings, and interestingly enough, if we apply VSync, we can still get the game to boot and benchmark, even with everything cranked up to its absolute highest. What seems to cause us freak out is a sudden jump from the 60fps we see on desktop to about 300 plus while the game's loading. But let's dig a little deeper to see if there's any damage to the PCB which may shed some light on what's going on, I decided to strip the card down. So let's get this reference style cooler off and see if we can find anything. Stripping it back, it's a little bit dusty but absolutely nothing untoward to the naked eye. And what was more interesting to me was the PCB layout. As I've mentioned, it's based on the same GK104 GPU as the 680 and the 660 Ti. And when you lay them side by side, it's pretty difficult to distinguish between the two. And this is including the identically placed cooler holes, which got me thinking. The GTX 660 Ti I recently refurbed had a really nice cooler, but it's a little bit of an overkill for the 660 Ti. So swapping the coolers onto the 670 might help us reduce that temperature spikes. So it was out with the 660 Ti, strip that back, and then create some sort of Zotac Amp EVGA 670 hybrid. So putting it back into the test rig, it boots up to Windows, which is a good start. The idle temperatures are considerably lower than they were on the reference cooler, which is a good sign, and we're going to go into MSI Afterburner and set a more aggressive fan curve profile so we don't suddenly draw a huge amount of power when that GPU temperature spikes up when we enter a game. The final thing I wanted to do was apply a frame rate limiter to remove those spikes into the multiple hundreds of FPS, which seems to be the cause of the blackouts. Having tested the GTX 660 Ti extensively, I know that the suite of games that I'm going to be using won't really see 120 FPS at the settings that I'm running at, so setting this limit, it should be a safe limit to put in place, and still allow me to get some games running on the card. So first up we've got Fallout 4 at 1080p and it boots up perfectly. On the high preset with some of the more demanding effects turned off or set to low, it returned averages around 60fps on the multiple runs, and the average minimums were kept to the mid to high 40s. The game still looks absolutely great and actually played really well, with the replacement cooler keeping the temperatures in check and very low. Crisis 3 now and running through the first few chapters as usual, at 1080p on the high preset it will average just below 60fps on the average, with the average minimums in the mid 40s. Just like with the 660 Ti, there was no severe dips here and even at its lowest, it offered a good gaming experience, and a handy little boost over the performance we've seen on the 660 Ti. Battlefield 1 now and on the high preset will average 60fps which is something the GTX 660 Ti 
couldn't quite manage, and the average minimums again stayed above 40 FPS, which is a really good showing for such an old card. Now on to Prey, Bethesda's recently released sci-fi horror FPS, and a title which it seems to favour Nvidia hardware, so we should be doing the GTX 670 a little bit of a favour here. And just like the 660 Ti, the 670 performed really well at the medium preset. We got an average frame rate in the mid 70s and the average minimums kept above 60 FPS, which is absolutely fantastic for a 5 year old card on a new AAA title. Now on to Rise of the Tomb Raider and absolutely nothing. This was a final straw in the GTX 670 here's coffin. After arriving dead, my patchy resurrection techniques obviously just staved off what was inevitable. The VRM started absolutely hissing and this signalled to me that it was time to remove the card when I couldn't get a display out, and retire it to the graveyard shelf in the office. Still, it's not all bad, as we've seen from this zombie GTX 670, the performance is good. Well, it lasted at least. On average, we were maybe looking at about 10-12% to performance higher than we've seen on the GTX 660 Ti. And with prices on eBay at the moment being fairly stable, I'm sure that the GTX 670, in a good working condition, would be a good sound choice for some of the more budget conscious gamers out there. For now though, I think I'm going to stick with my GTX 660 Ti AMP edition instead of trying anything more on this card. The possibility of an extra 10% FPS is not worth the chance of having to deal with the inevitable smell of electronic death. I am going to be looking out for a good condition GTX 670, as I'm quite interested to see if a fully working variant actually returns the same kind of performance as I was seeing here. But I'm going to leave it here folks for today, thanks for watching and a big thanks to everybody who subscribed over the last few weeks, your support it really does blow me out away. As always, take care and I'll see you down in the comment section below and in the next video.